We're just outside of Mohab and we saw this turn off for dead horse point. And uh, we decided we're going to come up here and check it out. It looks beautiful. I was expecting a bit of water though. Kind of weird. Water's all gone. It's evaporated. Look, it's all dry. Some water over in the distance. We're not quite sure what that is. I'm sure there's an interpretive sign somewhere over there, but we'll figure it all out. So we found the river. What we did do though is we found a trail down here. We're not sure how to get down there, so we're kind of intrigued. And those blue salt things that we were looking at, that's a potash uh, mine. They're putting water down there and excavating the salt. Come on, just see them from here. But, what a great view. It's almost like the Grand Canyon. To get into this park, it actually cost $20 and it is a state park. We were not very pleased with the cost as they'd varied from each park that you go through. But the view was spectacular and we really only spent probably 45 minutes in this location. So that's why it was a bit disappointing. Dinner time. Sandra's making a wrap. We're not cooking anything. It's already pre-cooked. Because it is 35 degrees. Look at our potato chips. They've expanded. Two two. Altitude. Altitude. It is crazy. Like this is like tripled in size. It's we popped it's just chips everywhere. Quite funny. So we're at the dead dead horse point. This is one of our picnic centers, these nice covered areas, but we found shadow down here, so we're going to take advantage of the shade. Super hot. It is currently 6.30 at night, still 32 degrees. And Bella is enjoying the breeze now, but she was hot earlier. Plenty of water. What are we having? We were having chicken, cheese. With cheese, and a spinach wrap with potato salad for dinner. That's something light, easy, and cold because I care not to cook something when it's this temperature or eat something at this heat. So, plain, simple. We have two coming. Bon appetit. In parts of this video, it'll be speeded up just to save some time at the drive was slow, which is understandable due to the terrain, so you wouldn't get bored. Can't be designated with some symbol. That's what said. You couldn't camp it here anyway. The designated symbol, and I didn't see exactly what the symbol meant, which one it was. It said at the very beginning, no camping beyond this point. Which is kind of weird. These kind of look like uh, places you could come from. I thought that was a stick. Oh, what the hell was that? I thought it was a, like a lizard. That's what I thought. As we were returning back towards the highway from Dead Horse Point, we noticed this right turn and we took it. The sign said Gemini Bridges. We did not know what this was all about, but it turned out to be one of the most spectacular parts of our trip that we'd ever done. The idea behind the speeding up and the slowing down of the video is to give you ideas of the different terrain. It did say there was a free 300 foot ascent or descent depending on which way you were going. It seemed to be that it was the uphill in the reverse direction of what we're doing because we didn't find a big uphill challenge until the very end.
it said no camping there. See what this sign says here. Gemini Bridge is not go. So we found a trail at Dead Horse Point um, as we were coming back, and it said Gemini Bridges. So we're going to try going down here. It was a 14, a 14 mile road that led back eventually to the Highway 191. We've aired down, the tyres with the heat and everything else were at 47 psi. We've aired down to 32 psi and the trailer was around 27, 28 psi. Um, so far some of the views that you've seen looking spectacular dirt road uh, we're going to go one way and then get to the bridges and then come back up to carry on to some scenic viewpoints that Sandra wants to look at and then who knows where that might lead us because there's no camping on this trail so we've got to find a campsite for tonight and as we've done so far and not planned anything for this trip we are homeless until we find somewhere to stay. Because homeless is a good thing. It's not always a bad thing because we'll find something for a night and that's all sometimes we need. We'd rather spend more time traveling and exploring than at a campsite. So uh, one night here, two nights there or anywhere. We've got the little oasis and uh, she's good to go. So uh, it's all good, so we're having fun. Um, have no clue where this road's going to lead us to, but uh, the view is every time we go around a corner, it is different, completely different. So we're going to turn the camera around so you guys can see some of this wonderful view. So hang on one second. And a lot of this whole area right now is all ATVs and mountain bikers. Um, and serious four-wheel drive and vehicles. And serious four-wheel drive vehicles. So we're doing pretty good, I think. Doing what we designed this truck to do. Getting out and about. So look at the views. As I said, every time you turn around a corner, something is different. It's just wow factor. Look at that. That's spectacular. That's definitely worth a photo. what I sort of expected to be doing but I didn't know when it was going to happen <laughs> don't know where it's going we'll find out <laughs> well Gemini Bridge <laughs> yeah but farther on than that though
Short 300 yard walk, we're going to take it. So we're trying to figure out how we get around, but there's these green markings on the rock which look like they are the trail markers to get to this Gemini Bridges. What do you say, dear? Awesome. Gotta watch out for all the cactus, so the cacti. They're everywhere. Long barbs. Ouch. So we just keep on walking. I have no clue where this is leading. We're on an exploring expedition. We have to find Bella though because it's going to get quite steep. And I care not to leave Bella off a cliff. Oh my goodness. That is a bridge. That's awesome. And there may be another one under here. I'm not sure. I'm going to go stand over there. I'm on the bridge. It's awesome and there's a big echo because there is a hollow to Sandra's right and I'm going to try and get a picture of that in a minute. Now I'm sweating bullets. I'm nervous apparently what I'm standing on is hollow. So I'm afraid of height so I am not going over there. I'm already having nervous moments. So Sandra's now on top of an arch, which looks really cool. And I don't think this camera's gonna do it any justice, but that definitely goes back about 20 feet underneath. So she's right in the middle of it. Look at that. So we uh, weighed Fred and the Oasis at a weigh scale. Hey, can you be quiet? We got 7,000 pounds fully loaded, both axles on the weigh scale for Fred. And we got 2,050. Is that right? Oasis 1 weighed in at 2,250. So combined weight, we're running 9,050 pounds of uh, everything on the truck and the trailer. So going down here, it's uh, she's a heavy weighted vacationable trailer and truck, but she's handling it rather superbly. <laughs> You can see here the general tires and the Tibrum suspension working to their max. The tires were deflated down to around 25 psi. Even though these bumps were quite severe in places, you could see that the suspension and the tires handled it absolutely fantastic.
So I think where it's going to get really steep is going down here. Okay, well that's easy. First gear, hill descent, two wheel drive. This is might be the part where they said it's at 300 foot. Mm, well that's up though. Oh, is that up? So the truck will go down on its own hill, like even in two wheel drive. Because this is the beautiful thing about this truck. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at I don't know if the camera's going to do this any justice. Two wheel low, sorry, four wheel. Two wheel high, hill descent control on Fred. With Oasis 1, we're literally crawling down that. That's awesome. The Jeep, you could only get hill descent in four wheel low. So, Fred having hill descent in all four, all three ranges, brilliant. Two wheel, four wheel high, four wheel low. Right now, 10 kilometers an hour. She's applied the brakes. Oh, he's applied the brakes. Oasis 1 coming down. Oh, this is sweet, man, sweet. Look at the landscape. That 20 bucks that I was moaning about going into this park, well worth this 14 mile trip. Oh my goodness. Look at that valley, look at that view. This truck has surprised me. I'm not big on air conditioning, but it got really hot on this trip. Really? And we've had the AC on pretty much all day today. And we were running 13.4, 13.4 liters per 100 kilometers. And we did about five, 600 K today with the AC on. That's huge mileage. Because it was 33 degrees. And the hottest we got was 36 degrees. Amazing. I can't believe this truck. This truck has outweighed all of my expectations on everything that it has done so far. She's cruised at 80. Oh my God. We've averaged 75. Hill descent control kicking in. Oi. There it goes. Oh, look at this. Look at it. It just eats everything up. First gear, hill descent. I'm not touching anything on the brakes. This truck, look at that hill. Hopefully you can see that rock on your right and look at the trail. We're in two wheel high. Oasis is behind us. <laughs> Unreal. Fuel economy, absolutely fantastic. She's averaged totally over 1700K, 15.5 liters per 100. Today and yesterday with AC on, 13.4. I can't complain. We're all going the right way, right? After all my excitement. Yes, we are. <laughs> Hill descent off. So we've got washboard now. Hopefully the tire's been oh. deflated will help us. Hang on, hang on. Oh. Hello, one's there. That looks cool, looks like pancakes, stacked pancakes up there. The rock formations through the Gemini Bridges Trail were absolutely fantastic. Like Sandra showed you earlier, they look like stacked pancakes. This one in front of us could look like a cobra raising up its head or a turkey with a long neck. It's up to your imagination, but the trail outweighed everything that we could actually expect. It was a 14 mile loop and it was absolutely phenomenal. You okay? Yep, I'm good. You coming in? Nope. Okay. 
bumps. This is awesome, I'm through the sunroof. <laughs> I'm glad I put that off-road hitch on. So one of the nice things about having Fred is having this tire pressure monitoring system on. Been pretty cool. Uh, been able to drive like this and see, make sure we got no problems. But what have we got? We have got an oh, come on out of the way. Off road setting. Maybe I should have gone to that. That's a pretty cool picture too. And you can see there that we've been in rear wheel. Thank you. Rear wheel drive all the way. So Fred's been pretty good so far. The trail has been so diverse. It started off flat with a descent with windy sections. Then you come right down a big steep descent. You turn left and then it becomes flat. It is a rocky floor with sand in places. And then you turn another corner and you're at the bottom of the valley, or so you think, and there's a windy road as you can see. Later on it starts to climb back up and it gets very narrow. It's absolutely so diverse, you just have to be prepared for anything. Looking at all the rocks on the left hand side. The loose rocks. Red rocks. Look at that. Beautiful. There's even a trail. It looks like it goes all the way down and over to it too. The 191, that's where we're heading to. Moab is in the distance. This is the 300 foot climb that they talked about. This has been awesome. This Fred and Oasis work together well. Still in two wheel drive. Just going to try it out. So far, recommend this trip and this trail. The Gemini Bridges Trail going into Dead Horse Point. We'll see you at the top. Bloody hell. Come on, Fred and Oasis, let's go. No panic, Fred can do this. I'm just looking at the drop off, do you mind? Jesus.
As you can see from this trail, it is winding and narrow. It is also a bi-directional trail, which means that vehicles could be coming from the other direction. That is why I'm honking as I go around a corner. The sun is also setting as we have been on the trail for about two hours. What? <laughs> That's a nice cliff edge to the right. No, it's not. Bella, stop. What's neat about this trail is it's going dark, it's 9.07, but it's amazing to see the traffic on the 191 below us while we're having so much fun high in the sky above them. <laughs> this is absolutely freaking unbelievable. Tire pressures make a difference. There is a gentleman that was in front of us, blew his left front tire out, and uh, we stopped to ask him if he was okay, and by the time we got to him, he passed us when we were walking down to the, the bridges, and uh, he, he was done, and they left in front of us, but I'm pretty sure he was running high tire pressures. Like I said, our tire pressures were set at 37, We've been driving for 1700 K and they've increased with temperature and altitude to uh, 42 PSI. So we dropped them right down. Uh, we are definitely running 32 currently, but I'm sure that that's not the cold temperature at all. So I'm pretty sure that that has made a huge difference on this trail for us and not getting us a I'm not even going to say it because I want to get off this trail in one piece. But this is brilliant. I must admit, it is gorgeous. Um, with me, I am a little afraid of heights, so what I'm seeing is a very sheer drop off, and there's nothing there except for big red rocks all the way down. So that's why I've used a little bit of different choice of words on this trip, a little bit coming back. But the view, the sunset is gorgeous and how all the rock formation is coming to life behind the sunset is just spectacular. Something you see out in National Geographic actually. What does make it more beautiful is the fact that this rock really is red. And it just makes a huge difference. First star to my left. Competition Sandra and I have, and I see the first star on the mount mountains. Damn! <laughs> but the red, you know, is just emphasized by the setting of the sun. 
Even the brake lights are setting it off. But I must say, Hill Descent Control, it is an amazing piece of kit. I'm going to show you something if you're a technology type of person and you're in the automotive industry and, we, and I'm a technical trainer so we talk about things like uh, cruise control, braking and stuff. Watch as I go down this hill to my brake lights and even if you can see the trailer lights. So when you go down this hill and you go to the brake lights, as the truck does hit hill descent control those brake lights come on to warn anybody behind us that we're braking and I'm not even touching the pedals. That's awesome technology. Where, like where we were, like up there. Yeah. Oh, I think. Yeah. Gemini Bridges, that's where we went. Absolutely awesome trail. I'm not sure if we can see it. We started here, dead horse areas there, came right down to Gemini Bridges here, we trailed, and we are right there. Looking at this trail, the lower red is where we went or came down, climbing, climbing, climbing up around there and around. Absolutely phenomenal. I want to say thank you very much for joining us on this Gemini Bridges uh, trail. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, follow us more on YouTube, hit that bell uh, if you want notifications. Thank you very much. Survive to be alive.